Okay, ready? Braving him. <laughs> Braving him, I wish, I wish that would just work for me. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Big Oggy Golf and welcome to part five, yeah, part five of the Oggy Overhaul with Matt Tapner from Cornwall Golf Lessons. Lovely poster, by the way, Matt, I have yeah, to say. Nicely positioned behind us. You may have to speak up a bit, Matt. He's oh, very yeah. shy today, I don't know what's wrong with him. We are in the bar area at uh, Radnor Golf Club. Now, I came here today to do a lesson. The weather was awful. Um, so we thought what we'd do is we would do a voiceover for a video that we filmed nearly two weeks ago, I guess now. Yeah. Um, we came out at Radnor I said, a couple of weeks ago and we did a putting lesson. Uh, the footage, I think, is brilliant and the ending is brilliant where we described all the details and you described what was wrong and right and everything. Uh, however, it was a howling wind, it really was. I, I don't think we realised how strong the wind was until I looked back at the footage and saw the flag yeah. doing this. Uh, so that gave us some issues with sound. Plus, I normally have three microphones to cover sound. Uh, the one that's on this camera now does a good job, but we normally have a wireless mic that Matt is set up with Matt, and it went wrong. So the wireless mic didn't work at all. That one over there worked okay until yeah. you started walking away from everything. Um, and occasionally we get some fairly good audio from a little handheld one that Matt was carrying sometimes. So uh, most of the descriptions of the actual um, little lessons in this just went to pot. So. Matt and I are watching the video now, the rough video, and uh, we're going to do uh, a bit of a chop and chop together kind of video for you. So Matt will describe the lesson, or the, the each part of the lesson. You'll then see on the screen uh, what I tried to do with the audio, which is okay, but concentrate on it a bit. And uh, then we'll go into each part, and then the end is fine. So we'll leave the end as it is. So really sorry that this isn't as perfect as our normal uh, perfect. Do we ever do a perfect, perfect lesson? Uh, but, um, we'll, we'll be at the Cannes Film Festival yeah, next yeah. This, day. This, yeah. this won't be Release. winning any uh, Rose of Montreux or anything, no. but uh, it's too good. The footage is too good and the end of the lesson is too good and the description is too good to waste. So, uh, and, and especially because when you watch it carefully, John, you did hold a couple of really good I did parts. hold a couple of really good parts. So, uh, so uh, it was a choice of shall we do the video again? Which I, which I probably won't do though. No, but, exactly. Yeah. So I think this will be the best uh, way of trying to do it. Okay. But the first time we've cut and edited a video yeah, voice so over. It's going to be a bit choppy and uh, sometimes, well, most of the time, if there is an actual voiceover a bit, Matt's voice won't sync with his voice Actions. when he's talking. Okay? Yeah. Um, someone made a comment the other day that Matt sounds like Bob Willis, the ex-cricketer. Uh, Matt doesn't know who that is. Maybe you need to go and have a look, Matt. He did used to have loads of mop of curly hair okay. when he was playing, but not very, anymore. Very similar to me, <laughs> not. Uh, so, that's all right. I normally sound like a Wurzel. Oh. So, okay, so I've had worse. Right then, Matt, so, describe part one of the video. Right, this, this first part, John, as you know, because you was there, uh, was trying to get out onto the golf course into a reality of slopes. Uh, different types of grass obviously on the greens but also we were looking at the different types of grass on, on those slopes and how the difference between uh, where the mowers are cut over different parts on the green even though the green should be consistent there might be a difference um, a lot of the putting greens at most golf clubs their practice putting greens are dead flat uh, which to me unfortunately becomes a little bit of a forced reality like always practicing on the range um, you know in a range is very clinical it's all nice and square it's all nice and level um, and there's no variables so whenever we or whenever I have the chance I prefer doing all the lessons outside on the golf course where golf is played rather than in a completely forced environment um, so the idea, as you've explained, was to get out the golf course. The reality was the wind was gusty. Yeah. We then had issues with the sound on the cameras. But what you are going to see in the video is a normal day playing yeah. golf. And yes, whether it's a lesson, whether you're playing your monthly medals, your next Stapleford, it does get played in all sorts of weather. And had it rained, 
we'd have probably still shown you exactly the same lesson, yeah. bar the fact John would be in waterproofs, I'd have probably been cowering away under an umbrella, but I just still wanted to do the same drills. Yeah, and I think that's, that's what we're trying to do with these lessons. We don't want them to be just in a range or on a little bit of artificial green or whatever. We want it to be as true to real golf as it can be. Yeah, definitely. And starting over the winter, we've got to accept We're going to that. accept there's going to be a lot of issues. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, as you'll see on the drills, everything is quantifiable. Um, years and years ago, back in the well, late 90s when I first qualified golf, I worked at a big golf school. Um, we were very much uh, all about if you give something to someone to practice, they need a method to see if they're getting any better or any worse. Uh, hopefully better. Or reality again says they probably stay the same because they're not adapting to the changes suggest. So as you will see from the video when we go through these drills, um, yes I've put T pegs out so that you can always measure it. Uh, as we know, if you've got a standard length putter, it's near enough a yard, at 36 inches it would be a yard, you can allow a golf ball and then you've got a perfect yard ladder. Uh, and as you'll see by the video, I've set them up as a, a classic, what I call a classic ladder drill to yep. start with. And I think this is where this first video is going to cut in from. Yeah, we did uh, five balls I believe. Yeah. Um, three foot, six foot, nine foot, up yeah, to fifteen. Perfect. Yep. Uh, I attempted to hit them in. Yes. And then, uh, so we'll cut in now and we'll just see that part of the video. Perfect. Five ball ladder coming up. So, John, uh, we'll take the flag out because, again, realistically, you'd always practice with the flag out. No point it being left in. Um, yes, I've put the tees even past the flag. And yes, there might be a call for laser in future practice sessions for you to practice to a tee peg rather than a hole. And I'll explain why later. But just today, I want to do these practical side um, how many shots does it take you to get all five balls in, as you would do normally, without my intervention at all, yeah? Okay. So this is just a quantifiable drill for you to set a score. So pressure's on this first one, will he hold the first one? No. No. Close. Uh, no, go on, complete them all off as a drill. Although, we could save time and say I'd give you all five of those because they're so close, but set the score and complete the drill off. Fine. Okay. Now, a couple of things there, John, straight away. I'd preset those golf balls. Some of those golf balls were set with the name of the golf ball or the, or the um, model's name with the arrows pointing where I thought the line was. Right. Some of them I deliberately didn't do that on. And I didn't adjust them. No, and you definitely didn't adjust them. So if we're looking for consistency in the future, we need to make sure it's always the same, regardless of whether this is a practice drill or you playing your next monthly medal. So I will suggest straight away, tip one, can you make sure you go through the same routine? And that would include, and there was a lack of this, practice swings, yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, you went full hold straight in. Let's have a go to see what I scored. Did you scored 10? Yeah. And I do think as you go through this over the winter, getting ready for next year's and this dramatic handicap cut, I would expect you ideally to hold 
probably at least half of those shots sure. yeah and there's definitely room for improvement now obviously the first one missed fine and most people will probably be saying to you well the first one could have gone in yet it, all of them could have gone in yeah. but the positive there if we look at the positive you didn't three putt any no but so, i think for me that, that was the important key to yes. just getting that distance close enough definitely for a yes yeah perfect but again when we talked about this in maybe in, in previous videos that expectation sure. if you're only expecting a two putt that, that again is back up at your 34 handicap yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've said to you I'll half your handicap if you do the things I want you to do but that's going to include every one of those was holdable yeah. uh, and again the mindset should be I can hold it rather than I'll just go for a two putt if you'd have just gone for a one putt you might have hold them yeah but or again some of them yeah, at least some of them, yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's room for improvement there. What was good about doing this, and I do it with everyone I teach, is I look at your technique while you're doing these drills, which form part and parcel of your practice routine. And as a result of that, I can then make some suggestions on technique, okay? But the bigger change will be on mindset. They are definitely holdable. Absolutely. This game for me, and people have watched the other episodes so far, it's all about mindset for me. Yep, it's changing definitely. that mindset from a 34 handicap or just doing my best yep. to getting down to a decent score. Definitely, yeah. So again, although these videos are slightly different maybe to a normal lesson, i.e. we probably at this point have chance to have a practice. I just want to move on to the next drill okay. and see where we are. So that was the first drill. Uh, we're discussing mindset. Yeah. Um, and. I think I just spoke to you just before we did the editing of this that uh, I played at Mullion the other day and you would have seen on the video I played at Mullion. Uh, it wasn't on camera because I was doing, um, I was actually playing the game properly as opposed to just filming, but my mindset had changed. Mm. And I said, I, I, I got a, a six foot putt and I thought this will go in. And I was gutted that it lit out. For me, normally it would have been get close to the hole, tap it in for, and accept the loser shot. But actually I was really gutted that I lost the shot this time. So mindset has certainly changed. I've got a lot more mm. professional, let's say, or... or um, let, 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 yeah, less of uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. And more, more of what to. can happen and, and with a positive with it. Yeah. I think as we go through this again, we'll keep coming back to mindset having done the same drills with all different levels of players, um, yeah, you would expect that scratch golfer to look at that and go, well, I'd be disappointed if I missed one from under five yards. Yet reality says, if you look at tour statistics, and you've only got to watch Sky Sports to see this, that even the world's best don't hold everything from under five yards, but at the same time, as I think I explained in there, whether you heard it because of the wind, um, it, I'd like you to get to a point where if you had a putt under five yards, it's got just as much chance of going in as not going in. Sure. And even if it's 50-50, I'll take 50-50 yeah. from under five yards. So I think then with the next drill we went on to, John, was, and once we've done those short putts, I do step out to, a, again, a quantifiable length of 10 yards. Yeah. Um, as you'll see by the video, I was talking about the slopes because we were on quite a bit of difference of height. So we set up a 10 yard putt on that slope and hopefully, as you're going to see by this, it probably needs to be worked on the consistency rather than, it's not a case you can't do it as it will clearly show up in a minute, um, but more can I be consistent and when we're dealing with more than one ball trying to do the same drill, I'm looking for that improvement. Can someone change what they're doing? Uh, or is it like uh, a lot of lessons where I actually might struggle with certain people to make that change because most of it stems from a willingness in the mind to make a change rather than I'll just hit another ball. Yes, you're gonna have to hit another ball to see an improvement, but don't just hit another ball, make that change, hit it softer faster, slower, hit it further right or left. And this drill that you're about to see does highlight that very nicely. So keep your eyes peeled right to the end. You've got your five balls down here already set up. Hopefully everyone can still see. Like I said, there's quite a slope as well. Big slope. 
Okay, so first thing is, I'm going to start looking at alignment, even though I know I have a ridge and yep. it could be a, a borrower or whatever. And the good news is straight away, look, John's already taking the advice, use the line on the ball to line up. I see the word for the name as well, it doesn't have to be the line. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the line. But at the end of the day, whether it's the line, I know these are just our practice balls I've given you. So it might not be your best Titleist Pro V1s that you're used to using, but the important thing here is all those balls are the same ball. So we don't suddenly have a softer golf ball, a harder golf ball, and we don't swap. So always practice with the same model golf ball. So as I pace back, John's gonna have a little go at this drill. Probably gives you a sense of how far back we've gone. So it's 10 yards, and look at this, wow. If he did that every time, don't worry about half in the handicap, this guy will be playing on single figures. You probably can't hear me, because we have got quite a lot of wind. Yeah, that's fine, keep it going. I'm just going to leave the camera down on the ground so you can see the results. Hopefully. Okay, I'll come and move that one. The good news about that probably highlights the fact that the line was pretty good and the pace was shy. And yes, before anyone says, maybe take these T pegs away. The T pegs are there just as a gauge of length and how much adjustment needs to be made. Oh, perfect. And you want the last one to be better, did you? Save the best one to last. So, so John, um, as you're going to have fun editing these videos later. It's, it's a new skill I have indeed, every day. Indeed. Um, but that was obviously the drill number two. Uh, putting up the hill 10 yards and I think whether the sound was good enough to describe we were describing when you look at your results there was a bigger difference in length than there was width. Sure I think I was um, getting in the right direction. Yes definitely. Um, it, like I said it was a couple of duff shots that went quite short. Yeah. Uh, one hit a tee peg which yeah. I think would have got closer. Yeah 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 definitely. Um, so there was two that was close and one Final one, yeah, exactly. went in. Yeah, perfect, exactly. Again, not, is it not editing, this is no, just... No, 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 <laughs> that bit definitely hasn't been yeah. edited. It's only our sound and voiceover that we're editing. The action is as it happened. Um, but this is a nice thing about during a lesson, and the thing about the drills, although they're quantifiable for you, the pupil, what it gives me the chance is to stand back and just watch how you approach it. And then I think we mentioned about the line on the ball as well, which you talked about before. Um, so as we now go into drill number three, the only thing I changed was we kept the 10 yard length, so yeah. that's still standardized, uh, but we added in how much less are you going to take off because of the slope. Yeah. And I think again, we did mention in that little chat that we had in discussion, if it's 10 yards uphill and you're hitting it near a 15, or you, you're almost adding 50% more, surely if you're going 10 down the slope the same, you probably want to at least start the discussion of I need to take half off, sure. if you're adding half on to go up it. Um, so let's watch the video and see how you got on with the 10 downhill. And I think this time, because obviously we didn't have a hole cutter and we were out in the golf course, we put a tee peg down, yeah, which so again is another We took all the main tee pegs out the yeah. distance ones, they weren't necessary, it was just from 10 yards, one point to another point. Definitely, yeah. Okay. So, let's look at drill number three, as we have another cup of tea. Cup of tea. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so, as John lines those ones up, hopefully this will give you a sense of, and I'll probably have to pull out quite a long way to give you a sense of the slope here. And again, in terms of elevation difference, 
we're probably looking at about a good yard of height, maybe a metre. And as that first one just disappears past me, it does highlight the fact that hopefully John on this next one will be adjusting the speed and the direction, which he's done successfully well. But again, just a fraction too long. But having said that, I think he'd be over the moon with that. And look how that slope takes it down. Possibly. Not bad. Could have saved the best one to last again here, I think. Look at that. He doesn't... Yeah, and he doesn't play a 34 because of his putting, because that putting was pretty good. Um, admit, there, was, there was a serious issue about Borrow. When they were going down, yeah. suddenly they were going, Yes. I had to change the alignment, even yeah. though I lined them up. Yeah, yeah, eye, yeah, yeah. I was starting to think, go out a bit further, because they yeah. were going far too much to the left. Definitely. But the nicest thing there, John, again, is, is you're adapting to the situation all the time, which is what, unfortunately, not enough people do. You know, if you're playing your next monthly medal and you see someone putt, and their golf ball was like your first one, you should automatically think, well, hang on, they, they've overdone it, they haven't allowed enough for the slope, and they haven't hit it far enough right. So you can adjust, but often it might not be your first putt, so you're gonna have to get better at reading the greens. But the nicest thing there says, if you know the length, and you know the line, you are more than capable of doing it. So again, back to our list of priorities, is it the read of the green we need to work on more so than the technique? Based on that, once you knew the read, your putting stroke was good enough to deliver the ball in the right place. Yeah, there, there's a three of yeah. really good length. Yeah, exactly. One is slightly short. Yeah, so. and in actual fact, three out of those five are within a yard, which is perfect, and an improvement on the uphill ones. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so again, the more time we spend out here, the better. Now, at this point in a normal lesson, if we wander back up to the camera, otherwise we're gonna look like little people right. all the way down there. At this point in a normal lesson, John, as you know, having had putting lesson with me before, we'd work on a lot more drills, but the whole point of being out here is that we can look at these slopes and just pay, bearing in mind what we just talked about, about once you know the line, I think we'll just do a couple more drills across the slope at length, which is the only time we are going to be able to set this up because we're out on the golf course doing so, yeah? So okay. once again, there might be a break in the video while we just set it up, but it'd be worthwhile. Lovely, okay, Swap. thank you. Okay, so that was drill three. three. Hopefully. Yeah. We have yeah. one more drill to go to final one today. Yeah. And, and drill four was again, we kept the 10 yard standard. Yep. Yeah, so it was always a 10 yard putt. But I introduced that sort of fun element that I tried to get in in every You lesson. say fun, I'm not sure if fun. it was fun for me. But fun, okay. torture, call it what you like. It was creative. Yeah. Um, and for someone that's so good at painting and being creative, I was expecting a masterpiece. Well. And, uh, yeah, yeah. We, I, I, yeah, I have to say, and we do say at the end of the video, yeah. uh, this was quite a rushed one, this. There was someone yes. standing on the tee. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the problems of filming on a live course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, definitely. So it, this was a bit rushed, however, I did make the mistake. Yeah, you know. but at the same time, it, it, it's just an opportunity to improve rather than a mistake. Um, and again, sometimes I quite like saying to someone, right, well, you have a go. And, oh, 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 I haven't prepared because yeah. it does highlight what, what you instinctively want to do rather than maybe it's unrealistic when someone's on a driving range they have umpteen practice swings uh, and after they've hit 100 balls they're really into it yet they'll go to the golf course, jump out their car onto the first tee and wonder why the first tee doesn't work. Um, so a lot of the time I do like surprise people and say well you, you have a go, you show me how to hit that drawn driver um, and I'm not going to show you at all. It's the same reality. 
Um, so again, it is a real life situation. Apologies to John's viewers on my camera work, because obviously at the time, when I'm holding our little camera, I wasn't expecting that one to be the video that we were no. going to use. So hence why it just bubbles up and down. So no bad comments about the quality of the you're, video. You're here to be the coach about the golf, not the coach about the video. Exactly, okay. exactly. Otherwise I might need to go to school on how to use a camera. Uh, but I'm far too busy <laughs> teaching yeah. to worry Hopefully about the videos we're skills. doing are improving in everything from the cinematic way that we're doing the stuff and people can watch and also the my golf is oh, as well. Yeah. They don't need to improve your lesson, You're, you, know, you know how to teach. <laughs> so this this fourth part was basically 10 yards uh, to a hole. Yes, uh, to a tee peg. Sorry, to a tee peg. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we put the flag in just visually to show you where it That's was. That's right. And um, I took the flag away. But the tee peg is quite close to a slope. Yes. On one side. Indeed. Okay. But as I think all green keepers will tell you, they'll put the flags uh, and the holes in positions that are challenging. Um, so it's all well and good having like a bowl shaped green and putting the flag in the middle or the bottom of the bowl. But yes, again, you'll generally find flags on one side of the green or the other. I was just being particularly um, creative, shall yeah, we creative. say where I put that tea peg. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people will say yeah, that Radnor is a, just a supposedly par three, mm -hmm. nine hole course, but actually it's very tough par oh, three. Oh, definitely, the, yeah. The, you know, the greens do have an awful lot of slopes that you have yeah. to read, uh, and it is quite creative here yeah. as well. Yeah, so. and it's, it's a good point you picked up on. A lot of people say, oh, well, it's only a par three. Yeah. Uh, which we hear all the time, but you don't often hear anyone coming off saying, I was under par. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so again, so although it's only a par three, you know, why aren't people going around under par? Sure. Because this is where a lot of your shots can be won or lost, yeah. shall we say. We have bunkers as well. Exactly, and we yeah. definitely have bunkers, which we avoided in this sure. one, but yeah. we're going to go head on uh, and tackle in, in a later lesson. Well, actually, we'll probably try and do that next. Okay. But as we said, this is just a little bit of fun to finish off before we then headed on the range, yep. where we then concluded up. So, so the, the range conclusion is all fine. So we're going to say yeah. goodbye now on this Indeed. bit. Enjoy the last piece and please watch the conclusion because the conclusion is really interesting. It goes in depth about my yeah. putting technique and everything. Yeah. Plus at the end, a whole little series of things I need to practice and keep going, which I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Brilliant. And that's all I can ever ask of anyone. So we'll sit back and watch the rest of the video with the viewers and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Matt. Cheers, John. Yeah, perfect. Right, John, uh, just for the purpose of the camera here, I have put your T-Peg down here. I'll just hold the flag while you can see from the video more so. Hopefully but on the, end, the other side of this, frame yes you can see the five balls good so, yeah. and they're approximately 10 yards away from us but the thing that i've made it really tricky is if you get the line wrong on this one it's going to be very wrong because right we are slope, cutting on the brow of this hill yeah so just a little fun one just to finish off with okay. as normal i'll get the camera of my camera out and just video the, the putting stroke and we can talk about that when we get back inside yeah okay. it would make sense to me so hopefully we can see that on camera i'm gonna to have to take that flag down anyway we'll leave it over here
John, we're back on uh, uh, my teaching bay now here at Radnor. We were a bit rushed on that last one, I have to say. A little bit yeah, rushed. Yeah, there were people. But good job you're getting fitter. Oh. So time we went up Yeah, I'm that fit hill. for golf, not fit for vlogging and carrying a bunch of no, cameras no, up no, and down exactly. hills. So after a little mile trek back here, we just want to look through the video I took of you, okay. which we'll put on screen when you do the video. Before um, you start that, I'd just like to say, and um, if people do see that last yes. series, four of them went shooting down the hill. And yes. yet, to my eye, from what I was seeing here, yeah. when you're seeing the film, they really looked like they were close. Yes. Like they were going to land, they were going to stop within two feet. Yes. And then they just started dropping and then they were gone. Yes, yeah. So the last one, I, I really was definitely trying to go way out left, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, just to not put it down the slope anymore. Yes. It wasn't about getting close to the hole it was, again, it was about yeah. keeping it in a position where I yes. could actually have another shot. Yeah, indeed. And and that's again, maybe that when we go into on, on, on course lessons and we look at strategy, that is a definite one where I'd be saying, you know, you could have finished a yard left, it would have been better than missing that by the say an inch right, yeah. because an inch right had you three yeah, yards think, away yeah, down I the think, slope. Seriously, I, ha I, I think I had about 18 inches leeway on yes. the right. Yeah. If you're if you're anything wider than that, it was gone down the slope. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Right, let's have a quick look at these. Like okay. I said, they're going to appear on the side anyway. Um, now, when you look at the general setup here straight away, I don't mind the setup. The eyes are over the ball, and maybe you can draw some lines on the screen if you wanted to. Um, but I like the setup. The setup was absolutely fine, other than what we just discussed. It needed a better read. Yeah. But everything we've done today says give you a line, give you a length, and you can deliver the ball where I need it to be. But when you're trying to find a line and you've only got a limited amount of goes, i.e. reality one yeah. out of the yeah. golf course, you struggled a bit. So sure. we definitely need line reading going on our list. When you actually watch the stroke itself, so that was a little bit quick. Um, yeah, okay, it's, it's not too bad a stroke. The one thing I will say is there's a lack of trust going on. So when you watch your head, ideally your head should be staying quite still it does have it's following this, the ball isn't it, it does have this worried look of did i get it on the right line yeah. whereas i'd like to think if and again maybe in the future we'll put a couple of my putting strokes up there i hit it and trust that the line was right and the length was right yeah so we definitely can work on that but in terms of alignment on the line you picked that was correct yeah the issue was the line wasn't correct, wasn't correct. you picked. Absolutely. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Um, again, when you look at it from the front screen, yeah, some people prefer the ball further forward in the stance, but ultimately, the ball position there is fine. If anything, never wear stripy shirts when you're being filmed, sure. because it highlights different things, although on this instance, it highlights your left shoulder is higher than your right, which it should be. So your body should be tilting back a little bit more so. It almost gives the impression your eyes are looking in front of the ball okay. on that screen. And again, maybe we can just experiment with maybe looking just at where the club head is I, in I relationship think to the ball. From after seeing this, um, I was concentrating on looking at the ball. Yes. Well, I should be probably looking slightly behind the yeah. ball. Yeah. Or more importantly, on the variable, and the variable in putting, as we keep talking about on any or any shot, is the club face. So more emphasis in my mind on what the club face is doing. Okay. Back we go in the swing, and again, it's not bad, but I would just question there, what are you looking at? And it does look like you're looking in front of the ball already. So when you look at strike, it doesn't then come as a surprise. The hands almost quit on the shot. Um, or, or certainly the top half of the body quits on the shot and the hands therefore take over. So it is a little bit of a wristy follow through. Bit of a flick going on again. Yeah, and again, more of a guide than a, I'm committing to that line and I'm gonna see what happens. It's, it's I think that's the right line, but I, I need to check it. So a, a little bit of lack of confidence, sure. but again, straight away, we can just say, well, let's go shoulder to shoulder. So your left shoulder hits your chin and then your right shoulder should hit the chin um, as opposed to you looking to see where the ball goes or and again just another quick tip as we sort of conclude over these points um, maybe even doing some putting drills with your eyes shut yeah because although the camera's not going to pick up if I close my eyes I have to then trust a lot more the stroke if my eyes are shut there's no point in me 
looking to see where the ball's yeah, gone. Absolutely. So we could do some eye shut work and interesting enough, having watched some of your videos, which I can thoroughly recommend, last weekend or two weekends ago, you did your blind golfers yeah. um, championship type thing. Again, having taught people that are visually impaired, their putting, and take it the right way, John, is probably a lot more trusting sure. in, in the actual uh, the speed, the feel, because state the obvious, they can't see it. So assuming that someone's lined them up, they will rely near enough 100% on feel and touch and trusting that the person guiding them has set them on the right line. Absolutely. You're doing your own guiding, I need you to trust the club a lot more so. Yeah, if I'm guiding myself, I should be absolutely trusting what yes, I've done, not definitely. going, or maybe I was wrong and I'll just yes. check afterwards. Or maybe the person setting me up was wrong. Yeah. Uh, so we've got to go a lot more into this trusting, committing, which then goes back to a point we keep mentioning, the whole process thing. So the process starts on lining up the ball to your, sure. to your intended target and line. And being confident that I'm getting it right. Yes, which is, yes, where we are going to spend some time, and it's on my list in my mind, reading greens is probably more of a concern to me at this point than the actual putting stroke. I think you practicing going left shoulder, right shoulder, a few putts with your eyes shut would, would sort out a lot of those issues. Uh, but we still have the issues of is it the right line? So yeah. I think as a real positive to end on, it clearly shows me uh, one what area we need to look at and two, it gives you some structured drills with the five ball ladder, yep. with the 10 yard putt over different slopes and your new 10% miss idea of how you can be practicing that in between our lessons. Okay. And as we keep saying, the most important thing is, although John's committed to this sort of weekly process of lessons, which is great, I can only take you so far before you've got to do it yourself. Uh, absolutely, and I've said, I've said yeah. to you earlier when we, before we were setting this one up, um, I went onto the range this week uh, between mm. the lessons and I've done yeah. two sessions. Yeah. Uh, you know, time and family wise, that's not too bad for me. Sometimes yeah. I can do three. Yeah. So it's, and I mix that with playing on courses. Yes. Um, and I actually said, uh, if you watch the other videos, you'll know there's more hip movement going on, lots of yeah. other body movement. I'm getting pain in my hips now. Okay. Because that's, yeah. that's just something that my yeah. body's not used to doing. Yes. So again, it's, it's one of those issues yeah. that my body has to get used to. Yeah. And it's probably a good sign that you're using different muscles. Uh, absolutely. Which is, yeah, yeah. is a good thing. Obviously, it's not a good thing if you're in pain. No, Stop but it's it. a good thing to realise that something yeah. is obviously happening in the change. Yes, for yes. It to exactly. Work. And you haven't come back saying, well, I feel exactly the same. I'm running the same thought processes. We probably would be the same. Yeah. So it's all positive in that sense, yeah? Okay. Probably. So hopefully you and your viewers have taken away a few things there to work on. But again, this is just part and parcel of an overall bigger package sure. of your improvement the Oki overhaul over the next, well, 11 months. Whatever long it takes, yeah, 11 months now. 20 days that we've got left to crack half your handicap. Okay. All right, John. Thank you very much, Matt. A few more lessons and I'll be back doing comps again and we'll see how we yeah. can start knocking it no down. No worries at all. Good. So. Thank you very much. No Thanks worries. for watching, everybody. Please subscribe, please give the thumbs up and uh, keep watching the channel. Perfect. Thank you very much. Cheers.